everyone, it's Susanna here with Health Ed Solutions, and today's lesson is part two on aortic stenosis, included in our heart murmur series. Don't forget to visit us online at healthedsolutions.com for more free content. Now, let's get started. The earliest sign of aortic stenosis can be a heart murmur that is loudest at the aortic auscultation site, since this location is closest to the aortic valve. This site is located at the right second intercostal space. The start of ventricular systole can be heard as the S1 sound, which is the closing of the AV valves. This is the first heart sound. Right after this, the rising pressure in the left ventricle should smoothly and quietly open the aortic valve. The end of ventricular systole can be heard as the S2 sound, which is the closing of the semilunar valves. This is the second heart sound. Thus, during a heartbeat, ventricular systole occurs between S1 and S2, and ventricular diastole occurs between S2 and S1. In aortic stenosis, a heart murmur can be heard because the aortic valve resists opening and then suddenly clicks as the stiff valve opens. Sort of like a door that is stuck and when you push hard on it, it suddenly flies open. After the valve clicks open, high pressure through the narrowed valve causes a characteristic crescendo of blood whooshing turbulently through the tight space. As the ventricle begins to relax, the sound decrescendos until the valve finally closes. This crescendo-decrescendo sound signature is sometimes described as a diamond shape. The stiff aortic valve closes slowly, so S2 might be a little bit softer than normal. In summary, an aortic stenosis heart murmur is best heard at the aortic auscultation site, occurs during systole, which means it's heard between S1 and S2, and it sounds like a click followed by a crescendo, decrescendo whooshing. Treatment. The goal of treatment is to reduce the excess pressure in the left ventricle and reduce workload on the heart in order to prevent or slow left ventricular hypertrophy and the degenerative disease process that reduces cardiac output. In aortic stenosis, it's important to treat hypertension. Diuretics might be prescribed to help reduce volume overload in the left ventricle. The way diuretics work is by increasing urine output and decreasing the workload on the heart. Diet and lifestyle changes are critical for long-term management of hypertension. Valve replacement, though, is the ultimate intervention. Replacement valves can be mechanical in nature or bioprosthetic. Bioprosthetic valves can be porcine, made from pig tissue, bovine, made from cow tissue, or cadaver, from human tissue. Mechanical valves are more durable, but they will require a lifetime of anticoagulants in order to prevent rejection of the valve. They also make an audible noise heard outside of the body, often disconcerting to the patient and sometimes even family members. The downside of bioprosthetic valves is that they can become calcified again rather quickly, although recent developments in this technology are improving the longevity of these types of valves. However, this is yet another reason that lifestyle changes are imperative for long-term outlook. Open heart surgery for valve replacement has been the mainstay since the 1960s, but in recent years, more patients are able to have a less invasive valve replacement called a transcatheter valve replacement. 
in which a catheter containing a new valve is threaded up through the femoral artery all the way to the aortic valve. That's it for our lesson today. Thanks for watching and don't forget to please like and subscribe below.